Um, welcome back, everybody, for the afternoon session. Session. Uh, the speaker is Devanjan Nondi from uh, Wiseman Institute of Science. Uh, he'll be talking about Martin boundaries of random walks on relatively hyperbolic groups. Thank you for uh, inviting me to speak here. So as it has been announced, my topic is about random walks on relative, relatively hyperbolic groups. So let me start with uh, this object. And let's start with uh, an example. So gamma is a group which is isomorphic to some subgroup of a rank one semi-simple D group. And suppose that this group acts uh, geometrically on the uh, symmetric space of G, geometrically finitely. And the geometry of this action leads to the notion of uh, uh, relative hyperbolicity. This was XG is uh, the symmetric space of G. So you take the maximal compact subgroup and the quotient. So it's a, a manifold of uh, a curvature bounded uh, strictly less than okay, some C. Okay, and this, the geometry of this action leads to the notion of a relative hyperbolicity. And I'll recall one of the definitions. So this is a much larger class of groups than this. And this uh, notion was uh, introduced by Gromov and then developed by Farb and Bowditch and others. So one definition is the following. So all the groups that I'll talk about are finitely generated. So gamma is relatively hyperbolic if there exists a proper, it's a generalization of this. So it, there exists a proper hyperbolic uh, geodesic metric space. and uh, a finite family of uh, subgroups of gamma, such that gamma acts on uh, X with the following properties. So the action is by isometries and the group acts uh, properly discontinuously. And when you have the action of uh, a, a group of isometries which acts properly on a hyperbolic space, then there is a way to define the notion of parabolic subgroups for the action. So the, the family H, so all uh, maximal parabolic subgroups of uh, this action have uh, conjugates in this family. And the parabolic subgroups, so parabolic subgroups of this action are those which fix no points in X, but they fix a unique point in the boundary. So when you have an action like this by isometries, then this induces an action on the Gromov boundary by homeomorphisms. And a parabolic subgroup is that which fixes, fixes a unique point in the boundary by this action. So corresponding to these, you have horror balls and you want that there exists a gamma equivariant family of disjoint 
open auto balls is that uh, the action of gamma on the complement is co compact so it's clear that this uh, includes this example so the examples of such groups include uh, groups which act geometrically finitely on cat minus 1 spaces for example these rank 1 symmetric spaces another example which is so which is important is uh, the if you look at finite free products of a non trivial a finitely generated groups so in this case gamma is uh, so so when this happens so the, when the uh, the conditions in this definition are satisfied we say that gamma is uh, is hyperbolic relative to this family h or that gamma h is a relatively hyperbolic pair so in this case uh, gamma is so the group gamma which is the uh, free product is uh, hyperbolic related relative to the factor groups okay uh, now let's come back to our uh, initial example so in this case the parabolic subgroups are correspond to the cusp groups of this action uh, so the points so the group uh, parabolic subgroups are those which fix the point at infinity at the cusps and in this case uh, one has okay so we also have the action on the gromov boundary by homeomorphisms and the uh, so the minimal closed invariant subgroup of this action oh sorry the invariant subset of this action so of this action on the boundary is the limit set and this limit set so it compactifies gamma based on this uh, action compactifies gamma but it also has some dynamical significance so if you look at the action of gamma on the limit set and uh, you, you look at this action with respect to what are called the patterson sullivan family of measures so these are defined whenever you have a, a group acting isom isometrically and properly on some uh, cat minus 1 space so this is uh, ergodic if the action is Uh, geometrically finite and this is closely related to uh, the geodesic flow on the unit tangent bundle of the uh, quotient so i'm looking at the geodesic flow and i'm restricting to the non wandering set the non wandering set is when you look at the convex hull of the limit set and look at the quotient by gamma so this is if yes yes yeah geometrically finite i mean it's uh, defined by these four properties so the cusps the cusp groups are exactly this h in this case so for uh, groups which act geometrically finitely you will have this collection and these are the defining properties of the action the the thing here is that this action is on a very nice space the cat minus 1 space so in general the action can be on, on a hyperbolic group and making this relaxation increases the class a lot but but what i'm going to talk about may be relevant also for the classical examples yes yes it depends on the number of cusps Yeah, in this case, it is just the cusps. 
Yes, the cusps are coming from H. Yes, in in the in that case, yes. So in this case, you have the invariant measure for the flow, which is the which is called the bowen margulis sullivan measure sometimes, and this is defined in terms of the Patterson sullivan measures. So there is a a weight, and then So okay, in the classical case, we have this notion of uh, com a compactification of gamma, which has some uh, nice properties, and it's useful to look at this. I don't think this is visible. Though. So in the general case, there is an analog of this. So this is the Bowditch boundary. So you look at a uh, relatively hyperbolic pair, and the Bowditch boundary is just defined as the Gromov boundary of any uh, hyperbolic space which is proper on which this acts. So, take any such space and define this Bowditch boundary to be the Gromov boundary of that. Of that space X. Now you can have two such spaces. For example, this also acts on X prime. In that case, uh, the Gromov boundaries of uh, X and X prime are homeomorphic. By so, this is a there is a gamma equivariant homeomorphism. It sends parabolic limit points to parabolic limit points and conicals to conicals. So this uh, this definition is uh, okay up to gamma equivariant homeomorphisms. And if you look at this example, then in this case, so when gamma acts on a rank one symmetric space, then the Bowditch boundary of uh, this pair, where these are the cusp groups, is the limit set of the action. Okay, now, now I move to the other object in the topic, which is the random box, and I'll just recall a little bit. So we have a finitely generated infinite group and some probability measure on the group. And then we look at uh, some the random walk, uh, which is defined by mu. So first look at this increment process, which, uh, which is a Markov chain with a uh, stochastic measure uh, matrix, this. And then if you look at the product of this, so this is gamma valued uh, uh, random variables. And then if you look at the product, this is also a Markov chain. And the stochastic matrix is this one. This is the familiar random walk driven by mu. And this is a recurrent process on the support of mu. So mu is the stationary distribution for this. And this will be transient in all the cases that uh, we will talk about. So because of this nice property, one talks about entropy, these uh, asymptotic quantities, limits entropy, drift, and so on. And uh, some of the questions that oh, people want to know for these kinds of random box is the existence of limit theorems. Then there is the question of boundary theory. And also the, the, the growth of uh, the powers of the stochastic matrix, which gives the probability of going from some, somewhere to somewhere in n steps. So a lot of work has been done in this for relatively hyperbolic groups and hyperbolic groups recently. And for boundary theory, the two main notions of boundary that people are interested in for these classes of groups, hyperbolic, relatively hyperbolic, hyperbolic-like groups, are the Poisson-Furstenberg boundary.
and the Martin boundary. So for the poisson fustenberg boundary, it's known that for a large class of measures, if you take a, a little the hyperbolic group, then the poisson fustenberg boundary as a measure space is the Bowditch boundary with the Borel sigma algebra, which you can complete using the hitting measure of the work. So this is the poisson fustenberg boundary, so it's known for a large class of uh, random box, those which have finite first moment. And this is work of uh, Kaimanovich. So Kaimanovich in the case when uh, the group acts on some cat minus one space, and in the general, for, for general relatively hyperbolic groups, uh, Maher and Piozzo extended the work of Kaimanovich to a more general setting, which includes the general examples. And I will, uh, for the rest of the talk, just focus on the Martin boundary. So I'll start by recalling quickly what is uh, Martin boundary. And then we'll move to examples and some results. So Martin boundary of transient Markov chain. So Markov chain is defined by the state space, which is a graph. So, so for us, it will be a graph and then uh, a stochastic matrix. So this is a matrix where the column sums the row sums are one, or the column sums, depending on how you write. But this defines a Markov chain. And we look at transient Markov chains. And the Martin boundary of this Markov chain is a topological space, uh, which compactifies uh, this discrete space X. And how one defines it is uh, embed x in the set of, uh, in the space of super positive superharmonic functions of the Markov chain. And I'll recall what is this. So you have the Markov operator on space of L infinity functions on the graph. And if this is bounded below by the function, then this is a superharmonic function. So this is the expectation with respect to the stochastic matrix. And what is the embedding? So embedding is you send a point here in the space to the function which uh, assigns to every x the ratio of the green function between x and z to the green function between some fixed point in the, in the space. And then you look at the, so this is a sequentially compact space and with the topology of point-wise convergence. And then you define the Martin boundary as the as whatever you have except the uh, boundary in this embedding. So some 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 of the nice properties that this boundary has are so you look at zi as uh, random variables with values in uh, the image here. Uh, the, the, the closure of the image here. So ZI are functions, superharmonic functions now, and this converges to a random variable, which takes values in the boundary. And this convergence is almost everywhere for the Markov measures. And if you, um, so there is the Martin representation formula which says that for every positive, uh, for every positive harmonic function, there exists a measure on this uh, boundary, which is, which has, so with respect to which it has the following representation. So F is the integral of the Martin kernel. So what is the Martin kernel? So this takes uh, X value, so a, a point in X and a point in the boundary and it's just the evaluation. And this, this, uh, this point in the boundary is a limit of points here seen as functions. So it depends on the embedding you choose. So the limit limiting function also depends on X zero, but the boundary itself does not depend on the choice of X zero. So, so this is the Martin kernel. And if you look at the constant function one and the corresponding measure nu, uh, mu, 
So denoted new x0. Then this new x0 is the hitting measure of the Markov chain of the Markov chain. So new x is the push forward by this uh, limit random variable of the Markov measure. And it's the hitting measure or also the it's also called the harmonic measure because of this property from the Markov uh, property. Okay. Uh, also, I should mention that if you look at the Martin kernel, Martin boundary with the family of uh, hitting measures, then this is the Purcell Postimbal boundary as a measure space of uh, the random of the Markov chain. So now let, let me let me say something about the cases when we know something about the Martin boundary. So like in the case of the Poiseau boundary, uh, the aim of these kinds of uh, problems is to uh, find a geometric realization for the Martin boundary. And you can uh, expect that since I have uh, already introduced this geometric uh, boundary as a compactification of uh, gamma, I want to know if the Martin boundary is the Bowditch boundary for a random box on these groups. And the answer is uh, no in general. So, so in general for an even nice random box, this is not true. So let's look at uh, some examples. Again, we start with our classical case. And let's start with the simple random box. So you have a finite generating set, which is symmetric, say, and you look at the uniform measure on this set. Okay, and then we consider the random walk here. So let's see what happens when gamma is uniform. So, so this is the case when gamma is a hyperbolic group. And in hyperbolic, when gamma is hyperbolic, then Onkona uh, in around 90s, so maybe late 80s and 90s, we gave a method to show that uh, the Martin boundary of this random walk is the Bromo boundary. And because this uh, hyperbolic group happens to be a uniform lattice, so this is also the limit set in this case. And this is actually true also for uh, measures which are just finitely supported. It need not be uh, a simple random walk only. And this proof goes via uh, something, an inequality concerning the green function. So this inequality, which is now called Onkona inequality, the reason is that this approach of Onkona is used in all the cases where something can be said, okay, in most of the cases where something can be said about the Martin boundary, um, especially when the random box are of this type with finite support. So this inequality is, uh, This is true whenever you take any three consecutive points in some geodesic in the Kelly graph. So the reverse inequality is actually an identity and it is true for all triples of points. So this is always true. But in the case of hyperbolic groups with these uh, nice random box, I'm gonna show that the reverse inequality is true. And this, this led him to, uh, so from here, it, you can argue that uh, 
the Martin boundary is the Gromov boundary. And this uh, actually can, so there are, so all approaches, uh, most of the approaches go via Onkona inequality in some form, but there are different proofs of the, of the Onkona inequality now um, due to Gozel. And they also work when the measure is, uh, uh, measure is infinitely supported, but has super, super exponential decay. So let's now look at the case when gamma is not uniform. So in this case, uh, using work of uh, Dussol, so all of this, uh, all of the uh, work that I'm going to say now, are they're they from last five years. So within five years. Using work of Dussol and Gekman, uh, Gerasimov, Pochagelo, and Young. Uh, so Dussol, Gekman, Gerasimov, and Pochagelo, they showed that the Martin boundary in this case uh, is, a, is a blow up of the Bowditch boundary. So there is a gamma equivariant uh, surjection from the Martin boundary to the Bowditch boundary. So in particular, if the hyper, if the cusp groups are non-trivial, then this is not uh, homeomorphism. So this is a blow up of uh, the Bowditch boundary at the parabolic limit points. Uh, so, so the parabolic limit points are points, and then you, instead of looking at points, you have to look at the Martin boundary of the, uh, of the. So, if H is fixes the point C, then also the Martin boundary of H plays a role. So you have to. Um, so instead of C, you will have the a sphere, for example, which corresponds to the boundary of uh, H. Yeah, so this, this, uh, these kinds of random walks do not kill the parabolic subgroups. And we want to look for random walks which do. So in the, so this is uh, known in general because of these examples. In general, it's not easy to know what, are, what is the Martin boundary of a random walk. So these strong conditions are assumed, but there is uh, another random walk which is, the, which is got by looking at the Brownian motion. Brownian motion. So in so let gamma be a lattice. So it acts as a lattice in HN. And in this case, uh, Leons and Sullivan. So they showed that one can restrict the Brownian motion to a random walk on gamma. So restrict the Brownian motion. So this works because if you take lattices, uh, uniform lattices in particular for this, then they, if you, took, if you look at the lattice as a subset embedded in uh, hyperbolic space as uh, some orbit under this action, then this is recurrent, uh, small neighborhoods are recurrent for the rounding motion. So this, to restrict this to a random walk on, uh, on gamma. And so this is, I think from 80, and Kaimanovich uh, gave, a, gave more sufficient conditions than just uniform lattices. And he studied the question of, uh, he looked at the case of uh, whether what the Poisson boundary. Here one can have, instead of HN, any, any manifold of uh, bounded uh, negative sectional curvature. So, in this case, with these sufficient conditions, uh, one has that the Poisson boundary of the restricted walk is the Poisson boundary of the Brownian motion. And Ballman and Ledra pair, they showed that uh, this 
construction can be done in such a way that the green function of the Brownian motion, if you restrict it to a copy of gamma in uh, the space, uh, which you use for defining the restriction, then this is proportional to the green function of the walk that you define, which means that the Martin boundaries are the same, even the Martin boundaries. So, for this walk, the Martin boundaries are actually the same. So the Martin boundary of the Brownian motion is the sphere and the boundary of uh, the hyperbolic end space. And the harmonic measure in this case uh, is the Lebesgue, Lebesgue measure. So looking at this walk uh, on gamma, you get uh, a nice structure on the Bowditch boundary, which is in this case, just the boundary of uh, the hyperbolic end space. And the question that I ask is uh, if this is a general phenomena for uh, all geometrically finite actions instead of just lattices. So this is for all lattices. And uh, they may not be recurrent for uh, the Brownian motion or such groups may not come with a nice action on some rank one symmetric space. But Okay, so the question is, if uh, this is general, if there exists a random walk such that the Martin boundary is the Romo, uh, sorry, is the Bowditch boundary. And in this case, whether you have some nice properties for, for the harmonic measure. So already before you ask this, uh, something can be said about the difference. So one can look at the uh, green uh, function to know something about what could be the behavior at the boundary. So this, uh, to look at these properties using the green function, a nice uh, function is to define something called the green uh, metric. So this is, this was introduced by Blasher and Broferio. This is when the, when the random walk is symmetric, then this is actually a metric. So otherwise, it's still a nice function to look at. So what you have is that if you look at this green metric, then this is quasi isometric to the graph metric. When say if you have uh, finite first moments, this is because of uh, how the transition probability decays and because of uh, a Harnack like inequality for the transition uh, for the stochastic matrix. So we want to know if this kind of thing repeats in general for some random box. So what, okay, uh, note that if you look at a non-uniform lattice, then the Cayley graph metric is quite different from the metric that you can induce on gamma by the action. This is really not quasi-isometric to the Cayley graph metric, which depends on the action. So the question is, if you can, by this process, define a, a Markov chain such a, a random walk such that the green function will be quasi-isometric to the uh, induced metric, which depends on the action. So the approach is to copy uh, the Brownian motion. So first one would look for uh, some space on which this acts like HN, uh, geometrically finitely. And then one would want to define a Markov chain such that the Martin boundary is the Romo boundary, which is the boundage boundary of the group. And one would want that the gamma as a subset of uh, X, 
by identification with some orbit is recurrent for this chain so that you can define a random box using this chain recurrent with finite return time okay and you also want that the green function of the markov chain when you restrict it to gamma to be the same as the green function of the random box that you define using this okay so let's start with this uh, approach and first the first is to what what kind of uh, space uh, should we start with where the group acts so one so the one candidate is the groves manning graph so this graph is uh, something which can be built canonically when you have a relatively hyperbolic pair and this acts on this graph gamma acts on this graph with h as the parabolic representatives and this action is free and geometrically finite it's nice to have a free action because it makes a lot of things easier uh, so let's first look at this uh, recurrence question so suppose gamma is some group which acts by automorphisms on some graph x freely then we consider on x this uh, the semi group structure coming from gamma so look at any point x in x and any point so any point in the orbit of x in x and any point in the orbit of uh, y in x and define this just um, to be a point in the orbit of y using the multiplication in gamma and then if you look at any any infinite sequence of points in x then you can define this map it takes the product in this uh, graph using this product you keep multiplying so s1 and 1 you send it to the same point for for the second one for the second entry you take the product of these two for the third entry you entry you take the product of the first three elements here and you go on and this is a bijection and because of this bijection you can do the following if you look at if you start with any markov chain on the on your graph um, you can uh, construct another markov chain using this uh, uh, the original markov chain with state space uh, as a subset of x and this markov chain is such that it has the following property so if i denote it by the random variables xi then this markov chain is exactly the product the product in this uh, with th with this product structure which means that uh, the questions about recurrence of xp are now questions about recurrence of a markov chain uh, which we construct so so if uh, if this chain that xp produces is recur is positive recurrent then um, so you can restrict uh, this markov chain to a, a random box in uh, in the group oh so so okay you need this plus you need also that this should generate uh, the graph by the semi group so if you so let me call this condition star 1 
star one is satisfied, then we can do this. So the second problem is, uh, is actually easy. And for the first one, for the first one, uh, okay, it may not be always easy to look for uh, conditions. Actually, this is not easy to to find a Markov chain which for which this uh, will be positive recurrence recurrent. So recurrence is easy because if you look at any uh, finite, so if if P has finite first moment, then uh, Borel Cantelli gives recurrence. But positive recurrence, you need something more, and that really depends on uh, the group. So uh, now for the first one, so if we want the Martin boundary to be the Bowditch boundary, so we want to choose the Markov chain on the groves manning graph such that the Martin boundary is the Bowditch boundary, which is just the Gromo boundary of the graph. So one would like to know first about the spectral radius of the Markov uh, operator. And for that, uh, there is a known method. So you have to first look for a reversible Markov chain. Because then you can check isometric, uh, uh, isoparametric inequalities for this chain. For this, yeah. So look for a reversible Markov chain such that the isoparametric inequality is satisfied. Once this happens, then, then the spectral radius is going to be less than one, strictly less than one. So what, if you look for a reversible Markov chain, then this property, this uh, issue is already satisfied because uh, the, the Markov chain that you get, uh, which is the increment Markov chain, let's call it, this will be positive recurrent. So the question is, uh, th therefore this question becomes one of finding uh, a reversible Markov chain and uh, with some nice properties also. So those are also required for this second part, geometric properties. So from this, we already have that uh, the transition probability uh, decays exponentially. What, what more we have actually is that We have that. So we increase. So we have to increase this by a factor because of uh, reasons required for in the proof. So the increase is by the factor of m x. So so m m is actually. Oh, by the way, I should say that. Uh, okay, I'll say it here. So there exists. So if gamma has the proper. So if gamma is such that the it is uh, hyperbolic relative to only virtually nilpotent parabolics. So we impose this condition that the parabolics have to be virtually nilpotent. Then there, there exists a function m, which is gamma invariant on x, such that this is not in general true that you can find such a, uh, such a Markov chain. This is reversible with the property that oh, and m here goes to zero exponentially fast exponentially fast in the distance of x. So this is something which goes to zero very fast. So this is increasing, but there is a still a, a bound on this, the same bound actually, because of some subadditive condition that uh, E satisfies with respect to M. Okay, and then one has, so one does not have Harnack inequalities for this Markov chain, but we can fix the Harnack inequality, the statement of the Harnack inequality slightly. So using the function M, that it satisfies a version of the Harnack inequality fixed by M. And there is the following strengthening of the green, so this identity. So what is tr true is that if you increase the left-hand size, side again, So 
So we increase the left hand side now, but still the inequality holds with some absolute constant for all x. Uh, so this is for all y not xz, x or z. Okay. And the Onco 9 equality that I wrote here, which is for groups, is not true because of uh, because you have this uh, statement because of because this holds so you cannot remove this and uh, so so with this present here yeah basically because this is smaller than this you cannot expect to remove this and make this smaller and still have that this is larger which is what you have there but what have but what, what, what you have is that this can be reversed So you increase the this side uh, with this factor again, and the reverse inequality still holds for uh, x, y, z in a graph uh, in a geodesic in the graph. Once you have uh, this with the with these things, then you can show that. Uh, Using Onkonas uh, argument, uh, you can show that the margin boundary is uh, the Gromov boundary. So this you can do when your uh, parabolic subgroups are nilpotent. And let's now let now just just look at uh, the harmonic measure of this uh, Markov chain. And with this metric, this uh, Onkuna inequality translates to a reverse triangle inequality along geodesics of X, rho X geodesics of X. So, so there is the uh, reverse triangle inequality along rho X geodesics. So together with uh, the quasi isometry, which makes these uh, rho X geodesics quasi geodesics for rho G, and the fact that a reverse triangle inequality holds, this means that this is a hyperbolic space. So X rho G is hyperbolic. Uh, so this metric coming from the Markov chain and the group acts by uh, isomorphisms for this metric. Okay. And this means that you can look at the boundary, which the metric structure induced by rho G. So you look at the visual metric, you equip the boundary with the visual metric. Of Roji. So DG is the visual metric of Roji. And gamma acts on this space by homeomorphisms. So okay, I don't have to say about any say anything about the metric here. Gamma already acts, and this action does not have anything to do with the metric structure. But let me just uh, write it down that this we have this action already. And now if you look at the harmonic measure, so look at this action with uh, the harmonic measure. This is ergodic. So I use the reversibility actually for the for this. For the recurrence things, you don't need reversibility. Uh, also, maybe for the Martin boundary part, you don't. Uh, no, I don't know. We we use an isoperimetric inequality to go to prove it. Okay, so this is ergodic and and this measure has the nice property that mu is uh, alpha. So this is the uh, yeah, um, harmonic measure. This is alpha's regular uh, for this metric. I'll just write it as the boundary boundary now. So this follows by a uh, shadow lemma. Uh, the shadow lemma relies on the virtual nilpotence of the of the parabolic subgroups and the fact that you all always so this. Uh, the harmonic measure family is already a conformal density. So mu x is 
conformal density on the boundary. And the fact that this, uh, these are uh, actually uh, probability measures. Because there is also the other measure, the Patterson-Sullivan measure, which is the conformal de density we always predict, which is so Patterson measure for the action of gamma on display. And this is uh, just, so this is in general only doubling. And there is an exact formula for this up to some multiplicative constants. So when gamma is a group which acts on uh, geometrically finitely on the upper, uh, on the hyperbolic end space, this was in the work of Stratman Bellani. And for manifolds uh, with curvature bounds, this is, uh, I think, in Barbara Sh uh, Shapira's paper. And this is actually true in a very general situation. So you don't have to assume that it's a manifold. You just need to assume that the group is nice. So virtually important. So this is uh, true, that this is doubling. And so the only case when this is Alfors regular is when the, so when there is some relation between the critical exponent of this action. So let me call it D gamma and DH. So if these are proportional, where the proportionality constant has to be a suitable number. So DH is the uh, rank of the parabol uh, parabolic subgroups and all of them have, have to have the same rank for this uh, to be Alfors regular. This is not in general true. So I will now uh, conclude the talk, but I will say that uh, this one. Sorry. Yeah, this is Stratman Bellani in, in the article. Yeah, Osama actually mentioned this in his talk. So in so if you if you if you start with so okay in the hyperbolic case your parabolic subgroups are abelian and in the cat minus one case cat minus one case they are nilpotent but I mean this does not require any uh, any kind of manifold structure this is just true this is a metric uh, thing so if gamma acts on some proper geodesic uh, hyperbolic metric space this is true that the Patterson Sullivan measure is doubling and you, you can find a formula for that. Okay, and okay, the, the last comment is that uh, because of this uh, structure on the boundary, you have the Sullivan type uh, zero one laws or uh, random paths. And uh, in, so behavior, so for excursion of random paths, into cusps. And you can have some Diophantine approximation, the Diophantine approximation theory in the boundary. This includes uh, well distributedness, so the study of points which are strongly approximable by, say, orbits of parabolic or logistic limit points, and badly approximable. And things like this. Okay, and the final comment is that, so now it's, uh, so now one likes, to, one wants to look at the relatively hyperbolic groups as a subgroup of uh, a larger class of groups which act on uh, projection complexes. Uh, and this is a nice uh, point of view because uh, one can uh, prove several results about uh, the geometry and uh, behavior of random walks on these groups by looking at, uh, by thinking of them as groups which act in a certain way on projection complexes. So these are uh, quasi trees. And uh, but there are still some questions which about the relatively hyperbolic groups and even the 
special case of virtually impotent parabolics, which are still not known. For example, uh, we don't know if so. So, okay, these are these are probably quite hard questions. Like, what are what other Martin bound? What other topological boundaries you can have so that there are uh, gamma equivalent quotients such that whether these are Martin boundaries and if these are all related to actions of gamma on some uh, so free actions of gamma on some um, graphs. And we also don't know if um, if you prescribe a, a measure here. Then is is it the hitting measure of some Markov chain, and does it have some other properties? Like this is not even known for the poisson Fustenberg boundary. So there are several questions which are still open, and I will uh, finish my talk here. Sorry, there is one last thing I want to say. Uh, it's fine, which is that this uh, for for this kind of property to hold that uh, this is. Uh, doubling the measure is doubling you this actually forces the parabolic sub, subgroups to be virtually important so this is a necessary and sufficient condition thank you but don't clap any questions or comments oh okay um, yes so if you have a, a hyperbolic matrix space so if x is hyperbolic and let's assume that it's proper then the so you can define the, so x has a compactification so this is a compact so this is a topological space compact metrizable uh, topological space which compactifies uh, x and the way you define it is by looking at uh, uh, equivalence classes of uh, geodesic rays. So geodesic rays, which are in a bounded distance of each other, we call them equivalent. You look at this equivalence class, and the points of the, in this equivalence class are the boundary. Um, and this has a metric structure which can be defined using the metric structure of this uh, of the hyperbolic space. So in the case of um, the Poincaré disk, which has a negative sectional curvature, constant one. In this case, uh, you just look at, uh, you fix the point, you fix the origin, and you look at all rays. So in the case of cat minus one spaces or spaces where geodesics are unique, this is uh, easy to understand. This is just the set of, this can be identified with the unit tangent uh, bundle at some point here. So this is, so the boundary is just, uh, in this case, it's just the circle with the Lebesgue metric, uh, sorry, with the Euclidean metric. This is true in the general for general hyperbolic space. Yes. The Martin. You mean this one? Wait a second. Holomorphic. Oh, He is asking about the original definition of Martin boundary, uh, which you, you define somewhere here using S plus. Uh, I see, I see. So you mean that, so, okay, so if you look at a, so if, when you have a Markov chain defined, which is transient, you can look at the space of superharmonic functions, which are positive. And this is defined like uh, as a mean value property for the function. So mean. So this is in, defined in terms of some mean value property. Um, so you embed. You can embed this uh, discrete uh, object in the topological space of uh, superharmonic functions where you have the topology of pointwise convergence. This is this is comp uh, this is sequentially compact. So once you embed this uh, in this sequentially compact space, you can talk about the closure of this, and then. The, yeah, that is the Martin boundary. Yes, no, the closure is not this space, but you look at the closure in this embedding. So you look at uh, the image, image here, and then you take the closure here. So this boundary is a space of uh, functions, a subspace of functions.
So let's thank the speaker again.